Damien, look, thank you to everyone here for being here. I, I know it's a little earlier than, than we usually do these press conferences. And also, I want to thank all of our stations for interrupting your regularly scheduled programming. And uh, I know that's important to your respective stations, but this is also important to get this news out to, to our public each and every day. And we couldn't do that without you. So thank you for your service to our, to our wonderful parish and, and Acadia and our community. Uh, with us, we have Dr. Stefanski here today. We also have uh, Bishop Harvin, who will uh, talk to you about some pretty important initiatives we have going on. And uh, again, thank you. So since March 18th, we have reported 435 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Lafayette Parish. And that's on a base of 17,731 tests. There's been a recalculation of some of the numbers on testing by the Department of Health, so that statistic has gone down slightly. The best news is that it's been five days since our last reported fatality in the parish, so we're very thankful for that. We have been very fortunate so far in that we've received tremendous cooperation from our citizens and our business community. Everything we've said and everything we believed about ourselves has proven to be true. We come together in times of difficulty. We survive this wind. All right? You got it? You good? All right. Thank you. We're resilient and we're self-reliant. We take care of our neighbors, our communities, and each other. This is a truly precious gift, and we are blessed to live here in Lafayette Parish. Our response hasn't been perfect. We aren't always social distancing. We aren't always observing best practices. But overall, we're doing well. I know that we're all feeling cooped up and our situation right now is, is frustrating. Most of the time when we experience an emergency like a hurricane or a flood or a, or a tornado, it's only a few days. This emergency feels like it's been going on forever. As we said before, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We need to remain vigilant and continue to take the necessary precautions. We can build on our current efforts and make sure we minimize the public health impact of the virus on our parish. Together, we will have victory over COVID-19. Our Lafayette police officers will be participating in distributing masks as needed as part of their Safe Shop compliance checks. We're asking local businesses to please work to source your own masks. However, if you can, there are masks available through LIDA and One Acadiana. Our officers will also have masks to help businesses who can't, for whatever reason, source them on their own. Our Chief of Minority Affairs, uh, Carlos Harvin, is working on our outreach to minority businesses in the parish. I'd like to invite Carlos up to share uh, some efforts that, uh, that we're doing to help the North Side and uh, also our minority businesses learn and comply with our Safe Shop policy. So please, Carlos. I want to thank our mayor president and um, I want to thank Greg Gotro with LIDA and we want to thank the Haynes Corporation that donated 100,000 masks uh, to Lafayette Parish so that we can begin an outreach to our businesses to keep the safe shop policy uh, in effect. We want to keep our um, shoppers and residents of Lafayette Parish safe as they go and we slowly begin to uh, open uh, shopping and stores again. 20,000 masks have been made available with, in partnership with One Acadiana. We want to thank them for their partnership. And we're going to be going door to door. We're going to be reaching out to businesses on Moss Street, Evangeline Thruway, that are in districts one and five. As we begin to slowly open businesses, we want to make sure that customers that go in are safe. The employees, the frontline workers, They've got masks that are able to um, uh, keep them safe from, so that we can slow the spread and stop the spread of coronavirus. Uh, uh, we're going to give uh, two for each employee. So we're going to say wear one and wash one. They're cloth, uh, reusable uh, face masks that we'll be giving to these businesses. And um, between now and over the weekend, uh, we're going to be just out there. Uh, this is part of an overall minority business initiative, as our mayor president has said. Uh, the coronavirus is not only a health uh, a challenge for us, we're closing a health disparity, but we want to make sure we close an economic disparity. And we know many minority businesses are already struggling before COVID-19. COVID-19 has just put one more barrier, one more burden, 
and we're here to help relieve that. So we're just very glad that uh, we've got these masks as a tangible way to say we care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Carlos. And, and also, we had an updated statistic. Last week, we reported that roughly 60% of our, parish, uh, our businesses in the parish would fall on these safe shop guidelines, these safe shop businesses. It's my understanding that LIDA has updated their numbers to, uh, to 75%. So now we're looking at across our, our parish, 75% uh, of our businesses would fall in these safe shop categories. So very excited to work with in our, not only our minority community, but our entire community here in our parish to get the economy back to where it needs to be, but in a safe manner. And the safe shop principles goes above and beyond uh, what the, the CDC guidelines are, the national guidelines, but our business owners understand that. And very, again, I want to remind everyone, we did talk to the big box stores constantly, and the I'm, I'm very pleased with the, the I don't want to call them restrictions, guidance and guidelines that they've initiated proactively, voluntarily on their own. Um, in, in a very responsible manner. So very excited about our business community and most importantly that we're doing and we're bringing back our economy in a safe manner. So that being said, I remind everyone we do have Dr. Stefanski here to answer any medical questions and I will, I have time to answer your question as well. Where exactly are the masks? So we have, um, great questions. Did you pick that up? So the, the question was, where are our masks being distributed? So here in Lafayette, we have LIDA that you can call 311 option 2, 311 option 2. Remember, there's 100,000 of these masks. Thank you to the Haynes Corporation. 100,000 of these reusable washable masks here in the parish. So if you're in Lafayette or the unincorporated areas, we, can, we uh, in, encourage you to contact LIDA. Uh, you can also do so. Again, 311 option 2 will have a live uh, team over there at LIDA from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., but if you call outside those hours or you call and they're busy, please leave your name and a contact information. We can get those masks distributed to you. Also, if you're in one of our municipalities, we have uh, distributed masks to each of our municipalities. So I encourage you to call your local city hall and get some guidance from there. Say again? I'm sorry. That's okay. Door-to-door -door distribution is happening in council so Carlos announced some, some distribution efforts that we're proactively trying to go in, in those particular districts, but also our Lafayette Police Department uh, has some masks on there. When they, when they do these compliance checks, just make sure our businesses are operating in a safe manner within the safe shop guidelines. Oh, great. Good. But our Lafayette Police Department does have some masks on them that they'll uh, help our businesses get to, to in compliance. Uh, Jamie Angel has some updated information whenever he does his presentation in regards to masks. Are our compliance checks part of the mask distribution? It's a component of it. So the question was, and I don't know if our microphone it's picking up, great. So uh, masks are, it's a component of our compliance checks with our police department, our partnership uh, with our local business community. We want to make sure everybody's safe. Started handing out any of those stickers yet, the Safe Shop uh, initiative stickers? Did we bring some? Great. I'm really excited about that. So, you know, because our, con our consumers, our customers in our parish, um, you know, they want to know that their businesses are, are compliant safe. And, you know, you, you have the visual uh, checks. The oh, There we go. We have the visual checks if you want to zoom in on this. So thank you to Lita and, and one Acadiana. And thank you to our team here at LCG. So uh, and maybe we can distribute some of these to our partners here in the media. Um, it's it's just one other way to, to help our consumers know that they're safe and that, that these are proactive measures that our businesses are taking to, uh, to make sure their shopping experience is, is not only quality, but it's also safe, which is our number one job at, at any, any public official. I, know, I think it was yesterday you had mentioned that you had conversations with some of the big box stores, yes, Academy, sir. so on and so forth. Have you had any further conversations with either big box stores or even small businesses about moving forward? Not, well, yes. I haven't had any conversations since yesterday, but, but the conversation about moving forward, uh, definitely. So I'm, I'm happy to please by Friday, and we reported yesterday, by Friday you're going to see uh, our, even our big, big box stores have more of the, the glass shields in between our, our customers and, and, and the checkout um, uh, personnel, but also masks will be distributed. Some, some big box stores are going a little further, uh, and which is their prerogative, and we appreciate that. Uh, not only the one shopper, one buggy rule that uh, Walmart initiated a couple weeks ago, and I strongly encourage all our families to initiate that. One shopper, one buggy, one buggy, one shopper. Clearly, Chris, there'll be exceptions. You got the elderly, and sometimes you need more than one person. We understand that. We just encourage, encourage everyone to make, let that be the exception, not the rule.
So, but I'm, I'm excited about our conversation. I'm excited about our teamwork with our big box stores and all of our businesses. There, yes, sir. There have been protests across the country uh, yeah. by people that say, hey, we need to open business back up fully. Uh, you can't tell me what to do. You're, you're infringing up on my civil liberties. Uh, when you're doing these compliance checks, or, or even just by word of mouth, have you heard any, uh, have you heard of any pushback by business, like, hey, we're going to do what we want to do, um, or by any other individuals or groups that you've had problems with? Because right now you're saying, hey, everyone's complying, we appreciate your support and your cooperation, but there's got to be some pushback in the community, some yeah, I haven't had any reported pushback. A great, great question, and and I'll tell you, I, I think a big part of that though is is really, and I mean this, is is part of what you're doing right now. We're we're getting information to the public. Our our public is very educated. Our public is. Uh, uh, understands the seriousness of this, but so do our business owners too. I think from we, we may be in a different position than other counties across the country, any parishes across the state, uh, because we we are the first parish in the state to come forward with these safe shop policies and to to help our economy get back back uh, where it needs to be, but in a safe manner. So very very good teamwork. I also want to just remind everyone these. 60 to 75 percent of businesses in our parish keep, keep in mind before safe shop they were completely closed and we had no problems no citations issued no summons few calls but you know we reported we educate understand have a communi have a communication or communicative dialogue with the business owners but uh, no power shut off or anything like that so these businesses are now allowed to operate under some pretty safe conditions and um, so we don't anticipate and we didn't anticipate much much pushback but very fair question because look you can look on the news especially in the national news and you see these reports you know Baltimore uh, Maryland uh, Michigan Minnesota I mean across the country so very fortunate here in Lafayette Parish also wanted to follow up uh, sure. this, is on a, this is more of a law enforcement question yeah. now that everyone has basically been uh, inside their homes for several weeks has, has there been at all an increase on in domestic calls by law enforcement responding to great great question do we have chief with us this chief ah no okay let's yeah, he he did, but it's such an important question in regard to domestic violence. And we had someone from uh, from a leader in our mental health, uh, behavioral health, Faith House, that came and addressed the media. Why don't we follow up? Because I think that's important. I'm glad you asked about it. Uh, domestic abuse is is um, is sad on any day, but when you're when you're in these situations, it's it can almost be more prevalent. So I think it's a fair question. Let's 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 make sure we get some information, put it out. Okay. No, thank you. Any other questions I may? Yes, sir. So. Um, Y'all are pretty proactive with the safe shop policy. And so we're getting a sense from the governor, right, there's a pretty good chance that the order as it exists today won't be what's in place say May 1st. So I'm curious if you can lay out for us like how you imagine local policy might itself be faced in. If you, if you started to get an idea of how you think we ought to sort of slowly thaw this whole thing. Yeah, great, great question because we got to plan ahead. We got all proper planning prevents poor performance. So our first step, our first uh, step in that in that individual marathon, if you, for lack of better words, was a safe shop policies. I believe the next step that we're that we're going to consider and, and obviously get the advice of our medical task force and our medical leaders uh, is to maybe address that occupancy level. That's that just kind of seems a little more natural. The mask works. The social distancing's worked. Washing your hands and. Every time I'm asked that question, I, I have to remind our, our viewers out there, our constituents, the number one line of defense, it starts with you and me, it starts with us. We have to continue, please continue to take this, this disease state very serious. Dr. Stefanski can talk to you after the wind, after the wind dies down. <laughs> Dr. Stefanski can talk to you about the uh, the medical condition, but this is still a very contagious virus that has no cure. Wash your hands, maintain your social distancing. If you can't exercise proper social distancing, do what some of our reporters are doing right now. Cover your face, wear your gloves. Take the, take the precautionary measures that you can take individually, proactively, proactively and voluntarily. No, no citation that we issue, no uh, measure that we take from the government standpoint is as uh, proactive and as, as efficient and as um, and, and, and effective, quite frankly, as you and I having self responsibility. It came up in the council meeting last night, and so many people have been asking us at home when our barber shop salons, yeah. nail salons, stuff like that are going to open. Do you have a timeline on that front? 
Yes. As of right now, we're still operating under the governor's emergency order, and, I, and, and it was issued in good intent, good faith. Um, right now, still May 1st is our, our, our date that we're looking at. If he extends that, he'll extend it, and we'll, and we'll respect that and we'll enforce it. I know uh, I had to go get some extra batteries in my clippers to, to go around my, my neck, and my wife's probably tired of doing that. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a measure we have to take. Um, now, we are working with the governor's office. We're working with GOSEP, our, our medical personnel, uh, and also getting some feedback from, from from the local uh, economy, local business owners, to, to see if we can make recommendations uh, to, to the governor to see for his consideration. And, um, you know, he's got a daunting task, 64 parishes that, that, that have fallen under his, uh, his jurisdiction. And I, I know he's working hard. I know his, his team is working hard to keep us safe. And, and uh, they've, been very, they've been extremely receptive to ideas. So this is not a, a totalitarian state. I mean, he's, he's, very, uh, he's made himself available, and, and so is his, his cabinet. So we appreciate that. There might be a chance that the governor might say, we'll go parish by parish and let the leaders of that parish make that decision. I think that's probably the more realistic approach. Uh, if, if I had to guess, and, and I and look in full candor, I don't have that guidance, so I'm, I'm purely speculating. Uh, and that, But my recommendation to the governor would, would be that. And, that, and I think a lot of local leaders have that same uh, same mindset. But this is this has been a two-way street the whole time, and, and, I, and I compliment the, the governor's office again for being so receptive when we have these ideas, because, you know, especially when, when, when this first broke out, Louisiana was such a hotbed, Arlene's Parish, Jefferson Parish, in that area, Caddo Parish, and again, the good doctor can opine on that way better than I can. Um, I, I I know this sense of urgency because I was in that fight with him, and and I and, and so was Dr. Stefanski. So uh, I think his swift measures were, were were kind of blanketed to the whole state for that reason. But now that we have more data, now that we have more intelligence, we have more facts. Our, our people, our constituents are, are more uh, informed on the situation. We've had time to kind of take everything in. Our business owners, I can tell you in our parish, know the severity of it, not just on the economic side because that hits them directly, but medically. And the market has a way to, to, to work these things out. I, you know, we say this a lot too. Businesses are going to want to make sure that their consumers feel safe because that's going to help them drive business. And our big box stores did that proactively. Our safe shop stores are doing it. And many of our safe shop stores, too, and our police department can opine, well, maybe tomorrow we'll have Chief over here, or we'll get Chief over here. And um, a lot of measures they're taking are above the, the safe shop restrictions as well and guidelines. Can, can you describe the compliance part in more detail? How exactly are you going to be enforcing the sure. guidelines that go in order for every district, or how does that work? Yeah, well, we're going. We're responding to calls. Num number one, so we still encourage everyone out there. You can still call three one one option two to report some uh, questionable activities. Or if you feel like a business is not in compliance, that's fine. Our sheriff has made his office available. Call the sheriff's department. Call your local chiefs of police, or your local police department across the parish in, in each of our six municipalities. So that's that's the first line. But we also have our police department department going out and checking on our business. And notice how I phrase that. It's compliance checks. It's literally, it's it's. we're not going in there guns ablaze, and we're not going in there kicking the door in. We want to help. We want to help our constituents be safe. We want to help our businesses be in compliance. That compliance is key to keeping our the number one issue, which is to keep our public healthy and safe. Um, the two tools that we have in our arsenal you know, available to us, we can issue a summons, or excuse me, we can issue a citation up to $500, six months parish jail. We can pull someone's power if they have LUS power in, the, in our, our particular jurisdiction. Uh, but we haven't had to do that yet. And I, and I don't anticipate that either. But you're doing the compliance checks even though you're the parish? Yes. Well, in conjunction with our chiefs of police of our municipalities, in conjunction with our sheriff, and then here locally, Lafayette Police Department in the city of Lafayette. I know that last night y'all took your first stab, the council and you, yeah. to sort of work on balancing the budget. I know there were some battles that you fought that you didn't really go the way you wanted. How do you feel, uh, how do you feel the business of government is doing in, uh, with that first stab last night of trying to get the budget in order? It was a great step. Look, it was a great step to normalcy. Again, look, great compliment to Veronica Williams right here at our city city council. She's the, the clerk for both of our councils. Uh, good compliment, great compliments to our parish council, to our city council for coming in here and being proactive and trying our best to, to go back to that sense of normalcy. Um, I, I feel like there were a lot of solid votes there. A lot of, uh, you heard Director Toops yesterday, our director of finance, that, that spoke about refunding and, and refinancing possible, uh, possibly of, of bonds and, and how that works with the bonding commission and certain um, permissions that we have to get 
get from the state in conjunction with our council and that that whole process. Now, those particular processes were in the very much the infant stages, but it, those were important important tasks. But you know, guys, we have to get our, our fiscal house in order. We had to get our fiscal house in order before the COVID-19 public health emergency. It's even more vital to get our spending under control, our expenditures under control, and, and, and get, get our city city our city fund, our city general fund. You, you heard Director Tubes talk about it in detail. We were already budgeted at an $18 million deficit in that general fund. The, the forecast put us at an, another, an additional $10 million. That's That's kind of scary, but we will get through it. I look forward to working with our city council. I work, look forward to working with our parish council. We have good, honorable people serving on both of our councils, and we have a good collaborative effort, and we're going to get through this. A few weeks ago, you had a few weeks ago you had uh, a call to action for people to donate to share the light. Yeah. Have y'all seen a response to that? So we have, I don't have the numbers. I'm glad you brought it up. So again, please promote that because it helps people in need. So Jamie, if we could follow up tomorrow and get Chris and, and, and the crew some information on that. Very, very honorable um, effort that we're making here locally. And, and again, it just goes to the to the charity and to the heart of Acadiana, to the heart of Lafayette. So thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions? How many testing sites are currently operational? I don't have the exact number. Um, I do want to remind everyone, um, you know, Carlos talked about the, the impact of several days. We've all talked about the impact that it disproportionately that it's hitting our minority. This, this very deadly disease is hitting our minority uh, neighbors here in our community. So I do want to uh, promote SWLA here on Patterson Street on the north side. It's free. You walk up, you can drive up. Free testing. If you test positive, it's my understanding, doctor, that they would actually test you again to confirm. That's my understanding. We can we can follow if we need. Uh, but that's great. So also, I want to direct everyone for testing sites in our parish. Please go to our Facebook page, Lafayette Consolidated Government LCG's Facebook page. Uh, Jamie and the communications team does a wonderful job of, of getting that information out. And there's a spreadsheet that we posted that um, that that you can see the exact locations, addresses, and and a lot of our locations have phone numbers too. So. I know a lot of our viewers have been asking about gyms, and uh, in particular, we heard that you had a conversation with Red Laurel. Uh, if that is true, um, can you elaborate on what that meeting was about? Sure. No, we met with them uh, yesterday. Uh, Mr. Red Laurel is a pillar of our community, great great human being, but also a good business owner. And um, not only him, we met with uh, Tim Metcalf, owner of Dino's. I can go down the line. A whole bunch of our, our really our... Our business owners, a lot of our business owners in that one of those groups that uh, of industries that have been closed. Remember, there's three groups in our Paris, essential businesses, the safe shop businesses, and then there's that still that business under the governor's order that are expressly closed. And um, it was a healthy dialogue. It was a healthy dialogue as far as suggestions on what we can recommend to GOSEP, what we can recommend to the governor for, for his consideration. And everybody's acting in good good faith. The, the governor's acting with good intent, with good faith. His team is. Our business owners understand the severity of it. You know, Red, you mentioned Mr. Reb, so Mr. Laurel understands that it's it's different times that we live in, um, but it doesn't mean that we can't try to find ways to spark our economy in those industries. Because I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of restaurants out there that are being crushed by this. I mean, crushed. They don't have the op the possibility or opportunity to do curbside or drive through that maybe some other restaurants do. So it's not hitting our businesses proportionally either. We recognize that, and we're just working with our community to find ways to get those guys back into business in a safe approach and a medically safe uh, step. So that being said, I, I would, Dr. Spencer, do you have time? It is my distinct honor, as always, and I truly mean this, to, to introduce Dr. Stefanski. She not only leads our medical task force, she leads Region 4 here in the state. She does, she's a great practitioner, but she look, her, her knowledge and wealth of knowledge is, is just a benefit to our community, definitely to my administration, me personally. So thank you for all that you do. And uh, everyone, Dr. Stefanski, thank you for your time. God bless you. And before I get to y'all questions, I just wanted to say a few things, um, you know, to acknowledge that we've had since uh, since this uh, crisis started in our state, in this region, you know, close to 80 people who have passed away. So just to acknowledge that those families, um, the, the caregivers of those individuals, you know, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with them. And, um, and you know, of course, not, uh, you know, not to even, I hate to even mention the same breath, because I know death, of course, is 
um, you know, is, is, is the most uh, awful consequence of this virus. But we also know that individuals who are at home struggling financially and have lost their jobs. And I just um, want everyone to know that we know these stay-at-home orders um, have significantly impacted individuals, of course, lives lost, um, but, on, but also individuals who are sitting at home struggling with mental health issues, um, financial issues. And we just appreciate um, the community of Acadiana responding to our request, um, the state responding to the governor's request to stay home and help limit the spread of infection. And just know that, um, that again, that uh, the sacrifice of everyone is not lost on us. And so um, families and individuals are in our thoughts and prayers. So uh, do you have any questions for me? Uh, Mr. Pansy, mm -hmm. do you support the Mayor President's Safe Shop initiative? So, um, so yes, yeah, so, so our role in public health is to, is to help inform and advise local officials. And so it's not just our mayor president here in Lafayette, it's mayors and parish officials across Acadiana who are interested in doing what they can within the guidelines of the executive order and opening businesses. So it's our role to advise. We don't make decisions um, or approve or disapprove. I can tell you the mayor president, as you all know, consulted with the governor is well in line with the executive order um, and, and doing what, you know, what they did last week with the Safe Shop um, initiative. I think the, uh, the initiative is great and helping businesses, giving guidelines and helping to inform businesses and the customers and how to shop safely and help to further limit spread of infection. Is there a level of parish-wide testing capacity um, that would correlate with being able to safely implement these policies? So, you know, testing, the, uh, the issue of testing has been, you know, very much discussed over these last several weeks and will continue to be. So what we're working towards um, at our level is, is really ramping up lev testing throughout the community of Acadiana and the state. So how we're working, you heard SWLA mention, we're working with um, urgent cares, uh, primary care practitioners, um, Southwest Primary Care out of Opelousa, Siberia Comp out of Iberia, our hospitals, to really greatly increase testing capability throughout the region so that we do have a better idea of really what the true impact of this virus is. So as far as um, how that correlates to opening businesses back up, is that your question? Well, I'm wondering if you have, if there's a certain capacity figure that correlates with being able to so I think that's all being considered at the governor's level. So the governor's got a great team of experts who are around, who, um, you know, including individuals who are, you know, well-versed in lab and lab capability and capacity in the state. And so I think they're, they're trying to weigh all of those um, factors. Okay, so what's our capacity now and how much do you, are you looking to increase? So, so our capacity changes day by day because when you hear these testing limitations, those are, that's a very, um, that is very true here in Acadiana. So we don't have all the testing capability to test anyone, even at this point, anyone with symptoms. Where that in capacity is increasing, um, and so our goal is over again the next couple of weeks to really ramp that up by the order in the state by the order of thousands, and in this region, um, you know, by the order of you know, I, I hate to even give a number, but but definitely hundreds by week, by week, yes. And it'll be throughout Acadiana. So, of course, not just life yet. But, you know, we're very concerned. I'm very concerned about our rural communities that have not had access to testing. So, um, so we're looking to, again, ramp up throughout Acadiana over the next couple of weeks. By week. So in this, um, in this region, I think the latest numbers, and I didn't look at them today, we probably have tested close to 20,000 individuals in the, in the Acadiana region. Mm -hmm. out here, so, right now. so in our weekly goal right now, we, we want to increase by the order of probably two to three hundred tests a week is what we want to, is our goal to increase weekly in Acadiana, throughout Acadiana in the region. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's very hard to tell because of all the commercial lab uh, testing that we've, so I really would hate to give you a number that's not accurate. But, but definitely we know we want to increase, um, and this is all coming from the state level and for the governor's level, looking at, um, we've actually done a very good job of testing in this region, and we're testing more individuals, mostly through commercial labs, um, private providers, hospitals. We are actually testing um, at, a, at a higher rate here than in most other parts of the state. Let me ask you just to follow up on the previous mm -hmm. question. It sounded like uh, you were all in on the Safe Shop initiative before that decision was made. I'd like to know what your advice was to the city and the parish before the decision was made. So they were not at that press conference when they actually uh, announced that. And I noticed that. I was like, well, wait a second. Is she on board or not? No, no. It's just I had something else going on that day. Uh, yeah. So, um, so, but, so again, our role is, so parish officials, 
you know, decide, um, you know, business economic development that is firmly um, within clearly their role. And that's a, you know, of course, a huge task, at, and especially at this time. So what we do is when, uh, when parish officials, and again, this has been happening throughout Acadiana, uh, when they talk to us and say, hey, this is what, you know, we've, we've consulted with the governor, this is what's allowed, how can we do that safely? How can we accomplish this safely? And so then we just talk about measures um, to, in order to accomplish that. So, you know, Parish officials, the Cadiana Planning Coalition has been doing, we've been talking with them as well, um, with Mr. Larry Richard and Iberia Parish. And so we've got lots and lots of parish officials we're having same, the same conversation with. And so those guide, the guidance that you saw where individuals should social distance, wear, uh, wear face coverings, screen employees, have access to hand sanitizer, keep your hands clean, those are the basic guidance that we gave to, you know, to, um, to the mayor president just as we are to other local officials. But I do want people not to have a, you know, to, to realize that we're still under, so it's not to have, not to be, a, not to give a mixed message, but we're still under a stay-at-home order. So we still ask individuals to realize through the end of this month, uh, there should not be any false sense of security. Yes, we're seeing the number in hospitals gradually continue to decrease, which is wonderful. Uh, we're seeing fewer people on ventilators, um, but we're still seeing, we still know that this virus is circulating in our community. Our best chance of getting to where we want to be um, over the next couple of weeks and months is to drive the level of infection down so low that you really decrease the risk of transmission once things do start to slowly open back up um, across the state. So we really just implore people to stay home. Um, if you do need to go out because there's something that you need that's essential, one person in the household should go. When you do go, follow the safe, safe shopping um, initiatives and guidelines to, again, reduce your risk of exposure. Um, but again, only one person in the household go. Parents, keep your children home. The teenagers shouldn't be running around hanging out with their friends. Um, this is still a time to, uh, again, uh, we don't, want to, we don't want people to have a false sense of security, and, and we just urge that people follow those guidelines, again, that the mayor president just laid out and that the governor has been reiterating as well. The Department of Health website said you may start counting probable deaths. Yes. Can you kind of give us an idea of what that is and how those will be counted? Right. So probable deaths um, should start to be reported, and, and y'all probably know more about our website sometimes because uh, it changes every day. I can tell you we have a Bureau of Health Informatics who's been working um, to really update and give as much information um, as they as much good information once it's been vetted. So one of the things is probable cases that will be reported, and those are individuals who the coroner um, uh, lists COVID-19 as the cause of death on the death certificate, but there was no test run on those individuals. So that's a probable death. They don't have a test result, but, uh, but again, the coroner uh, felt that COVID-19 was a contributing factor in their death. Do you have any information about potentially a cluster of COVID cases at a nursing home in New Iberia? I'm hearing from multiple sources that one nursing home in particular has nearly 40 patients or residents uh, that were COVID positive, that more than a dozen employees were tested positive for COVID, multiple hospitalizations. We're not getting we're not getting any answers from the nursing home. And we reached out to Larry Richard, the Iberia yes. Parish president, and he said to ask you. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I'm glad you asked me about nursing homes. So we won't comment specifically on a nursing home. You know, we've talked about this before. But it is no surprise that we're seeing in this region, around the state, around the country, clusters in nursing homes. Y'all remember when, uh, when this first started, when we first started to hear about COVID-19, it was on the West Coast, and the first real outbreak was in a nursing home. So it's not a surprise. We've been working with the nursing home for weeks. Um, and as, uh, you know, last night in Opelousas, um, Ken Cochran, the CEO of Opelousas General, you know, brought such a great point that we don't, we need to not forget about those individuals working in nursing homes. So we, we talk a lot about uh, health care, workers um, being on those front lines, and that includes those individuals in nursing homes. But nursing homes is, is really, unfortunately, a perfect setting for something like this virus to spread very easily. Um, that's the most vulnerable population. So we expect to continue to see clusters and deaths in individuals who are in nursing homes. The nursing home staff, we've been working with them. Uh, they're, you know, the right PPE, they're following infection control precautions. It's just a very contagious virus, which is again, where, while we're back to saying, please stay home, reduce your risk of exposure, reduce your risk of, um, of spreading this virus to other individuals. Um, because again, it's, it's very contagious in a, in a nursing home. Unfortunately, we expect to see more clusters and more deaths, but I can't comment specifically on one nursing home. But, but without saying the name of that nursing home in Iberia Parish, can you at least confirm that there is a cluster at a nursing home in Iberia Parish? So there are clusters in a few nursing homes throughout this region. What's driving the increase in the parish? So, so the way, so what, 
you know, typically happens, you can imagine in a, in a nursing home facility, is that once you have a case or a few cases, again, it's very contagious. Even if you're wearing all the right PPE, there's cross-contamination when you're removing uh, PPE. It's um, the nature of caring for individuals who are in nursing home requires very, very close contact. So, um, so it is just, again, a very easy, uh, this virus is very easy to transmit. And unfortunately, those settings, I think we're going to continue to see cases. I know, Christian, you had a question. Yeah, so I think it was earlier this week, maybe today, the governor mentioned that he likely would not recommend opening up the state care. By care, actually, he implied that we would somehow do this regionally. Um, I'm curious if you kind of speak on what regionally could mean and what, what are the risks that are involved in approaching this parish by parish? So, you know, that's pro that's, I hate to say, but a question I really can't answer. Um, I, I do expect, you know, I will say this, that the governor has, um, and again, as the mayor president mentioned, has a great team of people advising him. And so I have full faith in whatever decisions that he makes um, are going to be very well informed. As, uh, of course, I think we, we can all see um, when he speaks that he, he's clearly well informed and has a great grasp of the situation. So I think, you know, we'll all kind of learn together what those plans are. Are we still expecting a peak sometime this summer? So, um, so those numbers, those models have not been, I haven't seen an update since April 18th, 19th, so I'm not sure if any of that has been readjusted. Um, again, the more we, the better job we do with social distancing, the less of a peak, you know, we're hoping not to see a peak, but rather just a steady decrease in the number of cases. I, I, uh, huh. Hey, you said I have a question. That, uh, you're keeping an eye on the nursing home yes. situation in uh, St. Landry Parish. Are you also keeping an eye on the situation in Iberia Parish yes. where and I also got that same information about the nursing home so, cluster? Yes, yeah, so when I tell you, we, we're talking with every nursing home in our region, regardless of the number of cases. Um, often they are communicating extremely well with us. How are you uh, keeping an eye? Yeah, so we. So um, we actually have an electronic database that they report into. And, um, and then we also just, you know, old school, call them, talk with them, review practices. Um, so, you know, our public health nurses or epidemiologists are working with them, giving them guidance. And so it is honestly mostly phone calls. We, you know, we maintain those lists and have great relationships uh, with the nursing home staff. Are there coronavirus cases in nursing homes in Iberia? So there are coronavirus cases in nursing homes throughout this region. I, I want to mention one other thing before, because I, I don't want to forget to say this, and there was a great article, um, Dr. O'Ne from Our Lady Lords, I think it was in, in one of the local papers this weekend, but I want people, this is again a nationwide problem, that individuals are unrelated to COVID, staying home when they're sick, and uh, an increase of people dying at home, or seeking care at an emergency room when it's too late. So if people are at home, know a few things. One, that your EMS providers, the emergency departments, they're working very hard to prevent cross-contamination of COVID between patients. Um, and so our, our health care system is there for all individuals. So if people are at home with you know, symptoms of a heart attack, chest pain, shortness of breath, um, if people there at home with symptoms of a stroke or signs of a stroke, so that's face drooping, difficulty speaking, it's usually one-sided, arm weakness, call 911. Um, the last, you know, we want people to know that the health care system is, um, is safe, and it is accessible for everyone. And, and the last thing that we want is for this virus to, um, to lead to any kind of fear of engaging healthcare as you normally would. So people who are short of breath, chest pain, all the symptoms that I just mentioned, please call 911. Talk to your elderly family members, older family members who are at home and might be scared to do that um, because that's just, I just can't emphasize enough that we're, uh, we're continuing to see those, uh, that is a problem throughout the state. So uh, we're, we're working with nursing homes. I can tell you, unfortunately, we know that nursing homes are just a prime location for spread of this infection. But know that nursing home staff are doing everything that they can to prevent the COVID.